Well, good morning. I wanted to once again open up the Word of God with you on this uh, middle of the week and just take some time to kind of pick up where I left off last time, and that was when we were talking about this idea of socially distancing and some of the challenges that are happening in our world today. But I, I challenged you not just to practice social distancing, but also then to adopt something else, and that was spiritually approaching, which I wanted to talk with you about this morning. Essentially, what I mean by spiritually approaching is this. How can I use this time to draw near to God? And we talked a little bit last time about not looking at this as just a crisis, but but as an opportunity. And, and how can I redeem this time is the question that's kind of been wandering through my mind a little bit during this last week. And and I know for some of you, this is really a challenge. And there's a lot of people that are struggling with fear and anxiety. And so anything I would have to say today might just be lost entirely because you're just wrestling so much with fear and anxiety that asking you to do anything else seems really out of the question. So I wanted to start there. Uh, I was having a, a good conversation with a friend and shared uh, this verse from 1 Peter 5, 7, uh, which says this, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. If you're really feeling so unsettled in the midst of this, I just want you to know two things. One, that this idea of giving those concerns over to God, that that happens uh, on a regular basis. It's it's really interesting in that passage in First Peter, if you unpack that whole section in chapter 5, Peter's like, humble yourself, right? And then in due time, God's going to lift you up. But then he says, casting your anxieties. And he, Peter was talking to a church that was going through a lot of persecution. And, and in the midst of that, he says, you need, to, you need to come under the care of God. And so one of the things I want to remind you of is this, that that that's a safe place to be. It's a good place to be because God cares for you. And that's what he wanted to remind the church of, casting. As you're going through this, you're going to continually be casting these anxieties on God, and you're doing so knowing that he cares for you. And so I want to remind you that you do not have to face this alone, that you have a God who loves you and wants to go through this with you. But the second thing that I think is really important here is that sometimes in the midst of crisis, especially people that are problem solvers or, uh, you know, they're just kind of wanting to keep things managed, this becomes really unsettled because it's out of your control, right? It's beyond your ability to manage or to, to line everything up and make it happen. You just, there's too many variables. You can't keep a handle on it. At the end of the day, I'm not the one who ultimately is in charge of this whole thing. I need to humble myself under the care of God, knowing that then I can bring those concerns that I don't have it all under control. This is too big for me. All of those things, I can then cast those anxieties and cares on God because I know not only is he in charge, but he also cares for me. So I just want to remind you of those two things as we get started today, that that one, you have a God that loves you and he wants to walk with you through this. And secondly, it's not your job to sit there and try to manage and micromanage and maintain everything and and make sure everything's under control. At the end of the day, uh, that job is in God's hands. This is bigger than us. There's a lot of things we can do and I would encourage you to do those things, be wise, you know, all of that. But at the end of the day, let's put our trust in God. Now, if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to open up to the book of Philippians. Now, Philippians is an interesting book because Paul is writing this while he is really uh, socially distancing. He's in prison. And Paul is in prison for his work in sharing and spreading the gospel. And and so uh, this is a, what we call a prison epistle. It's it's a time where Paul is writing to people who are not isolated, uh, although they're isolated from him, and he's trying to encourage them in their isolation to remain faithful to Christ and continue to walk faithfully uh, before the Lord. 
And so Paul is going to, at the end of his letter in chapter 4 of Philippians, he's going to kind of say to them, here's some things that I really want you to do. There's some things you can choose today. And so I would say to you the same thing this morning. There are some things that you can do today. There's some things that you can choose today and tomorrow and the next day that will help you to spiritually approach, to draw near to God during this time of social distancing. This is a way that you can redeem this time in a way that's going to be really spiritually beneficial to you, emotionally beneficial to you, and even, I believe, uh, be a benefit and encouragement to those around you. And Paul begins this kind of list in in chapter 4 and in verse 4 of Philippians. This is what it says. Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. I always say to my kids when they're frustrated with life, I said, you have to choose joy. Uh, joy is different than happiness. Happiness is is basically you feel good because of what's happening, right? Hence the name happiness. It's dependent upon your circumstances. And right now, circumstances are all over. I mean, all of us are trying to our best, you know, adjust to a new normal. Um, and, and sometimes that really has a way of robbing us of happiness because we don't really like some of the things that are happening. But choosing joy is different. And Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. You can, in the Lord, in Christ, as you rest in him, you can choose joy today. You can say, you know what? I'm going to rejoice in the Lord always. Paul is writing this while he's in prison. We read in the book of Acts that Paul and Silas, uh, Silas is another guy who was traveling with Paul. They were in prison. They had been beaten and chained in the inner part of the prison but yet they were singing praises to God. They chose joy. You can choose the attitude with which you approach this day. You can choose the lens through which you filter the events that are going on around you. You can do that through a lens of hopelessness, despair, uh, despondency, or you can say, I am going to choose today to trust in the Lord And I am going to choose joy that God is in charge even when I am not. He can control things even when I cannot. And so I am going to rejoice in the Lord. God loves me. And that gives me great joy no matter what is going on around me. Secondly, Paul says then um, in verse 5, let your reasonableness, and, and this is an interesting word, Um, it really talks about your gentleness and your consideration to others, right? So you want to come across as being reasonable to others in the sense that your reasonableness or your gentleness, it might be translated in your Bible, be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. So here's what happens. When we feel out of control, we tend to respond in out of control ways to others. When we can't manage things, we try to maybe micromanage others. But if the Lord is at hand, the Lord is near and we're resting and trusting in him and rejoicing in the fact that even when we're not able to manage everything he is, then we can say, you know what? I don't need to rah, you know, really get all worked up about this situation. I can trust in the Lord and, and I can come across and be very reasonable with you. I don't need to panic right now. I, I can be gentle in my response to you. I can be considerate in my response to you because you know what? The Lord's here. And he can take care of it even when I can't. So I, I don't need to take all this stress on myself and then kind of, you know, spew that or, or put it into all my interactions with people around me. I, I can let my reasonableness um, be evident to everyone because the Lord is near. The next thing Paul then goes on to say is uh, in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. Well, that doesn't leave any room for uh, margin, does it? At nothing. Be anxious in nothing but in everything by prayer and petition, or your you might have supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace that we all want from God comes 
when we say to God, this is too big for me, but it's not too big for you. I'm going to take it off of my shoulders and I'm going to give it to you to carry. And that's really what we're saying. I remember when the kids were young, we liked to go to the Adirondacks and do some hiking. And I remember one hike we took. It wasn't particularly strenuous for me, um, but the kids were pretty young. And that was one of the first trips they felt, you know, they had little backpacks and they were carrying their water and their sandwich, you know, and we're going to hike back into this pond and have a little, you know, picnic. And then we're going to hike back out. Well, on the way back out, boy, those little legs got pretty tired. And, and they were feeling the weight on their shoulders uh, pretty heavy. And uh, so long story short, I, I ended up at one point carrying about four backpacks, myself, mine, and three of my kids. And then Tara carried a, a backpack or two, and I actually ended up carrying a couple of the kids for a while in spurts, you know. I was carrying a lot more than I'd anticipated on that hike. Uh, but looking back on it, I said, what a great example, and what a... What a perfect living illustration that is of what God wants to do for us. He loves us and he knows when that weight is getting too heavy. And if we'll just say, dad, would you, would you take this? It's too much for me. I can't make it up this hill uh, with this weight on me. Would you, would you take it? You know how, how much peace there was with my kids knowing that I could take that backpack from them, that I could carry them if I needed to. I could carry two of them if I needed to. You know what? God knows uh, what you need. And he, and he would love for you to say, God, I, I, this is too big for me. Will you take it? And he said, absolutely, I can. And when we do that, for the peace that comes, as opposed to the anxiety of how am I going to do this? And God's like, you don't have to. I can do this with you. I can carry that burden. And so he says, in everything uh, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And so I can find that peace that nothing else can give. It's the peace that surpasses all understanding. I mean, you can't comprehend how much peace it can give you when you say, God, I don't need to be the one who's in charge here. I don't need to be the one who needs to manage all these details. I I can't do it. And you say, but you can. Oh, I can check that off my list of things I need to worry about today because God's in charge and he'll take care of it. He'll take care of me. He loves me and I can trust in him. And I can really find great peace there. Well, then Paul uh, finishes up this little moment when he talks about in verse 8. He says we need to intentionally focus our thoughts, our minds on some things. Because here's what I know. A lot of times our imaginations or just our worries, our anxieties, they just consume our thoughts. And they, and they just take over our mind and we can't really think of anything else. And then fear and anxiety, worry, then just comes in and crushes us, Right? And so Paul is inviting us to focus and intentionally move our thoughts away from those things that destroy us and instead move them toward things that will be life-giving to us. And so we're intentionally focusing our thoughts. Listen to what he says in verse 8, chapter 4. Finally, brothers, whatever is true. Boy, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And some of the things I try to post just, just to help people know, here, here's something that's actually true. You can, you can say this is real um, instead of all this other stuff that's out there. And just so much misinformation or misleading information that's out there, whether it's about COVID-19 or anything really, right? And so you have to be really mindful about what you're listening to and where you're, they're getting information and are they skewing what they're saying, Um is it accurate? You just, I just really caution you to maybe back away from all those social media feeds and they're filling you with all this maybe fear, anxiety, or misleading stuff that can happen on some of those uh, and just maybe try to condense what is true. But beyond stuff with COVID-19, there's, there's a lot of things in our world that are misleading. Uh, there's a lot of things in our world that are, that are just downright false. Paul says, move your mind intentionally focus your thoughts on things that are true. And then whatever is honorable. There are some people that are really getting consumed with some dishonorable ideas and anger and such during this. That's not helpful to you. It's not helpful to anyone else. Uh, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, you know, what, what is going to be right in this moment, whatever is pure as opposed to impure, whatever is lovely, if you're taking some time just to enjoy something beautiful today. You know, um, there's some really cool stuff, museums and 
have put on virtual tours and NASA, you know, made a bunch of uh, stuff available. And you can just go on and, and look at all kinds of amazing stuff of artwork and creation and different things like that. And boy, I would encourage you take some time, just enjoy some things that are really beautiful. I try to get outside and take a walk. We did yesterday, try to do so today again. And just to be out in nature and just say, you know what, God, you've made a beautiful world and I get to enjoy it today. How incredible is that? You know, take time to appreciate some of those things. Look at the people in your life and say, man, these are lovely people that I'm quarantined in this house with. And maybe we got a little short with each other. Man, but you know, they're a lovely person and I want to I wanna treat them well. So Paul says, whatever's true, whatever's just, whatever's pure, honorable, lovely, whatever is commendable, that means it's good. <laughs> If there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Have you thought about things that are worthy of praise? Certainly the Lord. Have you spent some time in worship, focusing your thoughts intentionally in that direction? Paul says we need to grab a hold of our minds in these moments like this because our minds will run away into negative territory if we don't take control of it and move it in the right direction. We need to intentionally uh, make sure that we're doing what we need to do with our thoughts. And then lastly, he says this, whatever you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I know that one of the hardest things for some of you and not maybe gathering as the church is you miss some of that interaction that encourages you, maybe even challenges you to, you know what, I need to, I need to walk like Jesus here. And this is a time for you to intentionally bring to mind some of the examples of godly men and women that you see in the scriptures and maybe you, you see in your local church fellowship or your pastors or whoever and say, you know what, I want to I wanna walk faithfully. I've seen, I've heard, I've studied God's word. I've seen that lived out in front of me in this person. I need to imitate that a little bit more. And Paul said, you know, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? He's like, follow me as I follow Jesus. And, and so are there Uh, sound spiritual practices that you know that you should be doing. I've heard a lot of people say, oh man, I know that I need to get back into church. Well, you know what? How about being the church today? People have said, oh man, I really know I need to get in the word of God. How about getting in the word of God today? And it's like, oh man, I know that I should pray about these things, but we'll stop putting the but in there. Instead say, and I will pray about it, right? And so there's some spiritual practices you know are sound, you know you should be doing, Now is the time to redeem this moment and put those practices into effect in your life right now so you can begin to reap the benefits of it. And lastly, for those of you who are still wrestling with this, I just want to close with this word of encouragement from Psalm 27.1. And it simply says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Can I just challenge you today that you don't need to be afraid, but instead you can intentionally choose joy. You can choose your response to others to be gentle and considerate, right? Uh, To be reasonable with them. You can choose to trust God even with the biggest anxieties and concerns. And you can bring your request to him knowing that he cares for you and you can experience the peace he gives. You can intentionally grab a hold of your thoughts today, move them in a positive direction, and take control of what things you're going to think about, things that are going to be healthy, beneficial to you. And then you can begin to put into effect sound spiritual practices you know you should be doing already. You begin to practice those. And I can tell you that this is going to be one of the best things you've ever done in redeeming this time. And you look back and say, I'm so glad I took advantage of this pause to then maybe focus on the things that will be of most benefit to me and then by implication, most benefit to those around me as well. So I just wanna challenge you to do that and that's a great way for you to spiritually approach and redeem this time and and find ways to, to really draw near to God during this time, uh, even as you may be socially distancing from others. Well, God bless you. I look forward to hearing, maybe back from you, how some of this is affecting and challenging you in your life. We'll talk to you soon.